I walked into my first audition, I was like, are we doing this? Because this is crazy, y'all. The energy of that first script I read was unlike anything I had read before. I definitely thought, wow. I knew it would be historic, and it was necessary. Somebody had to do it. We started with a bang, and I guess we're going out with one. Queer as Folk, the final season. For the show that shocked a nation and changed the face of TV, it's still all or nothing. We find Emmett Honeycutt doing his party planning business, which is going well, and he uh, gets sucked into yet another new career. I'm going to be Channel 5's queer guy, generally showing Pittsburgh how to be fabulous. You can start by showing me. Yeah, it's kind of like this old Teddy this season. We'll see him get fixed up a bit, I guess. <laughs> look at me. I look like a cow chart in the butcher shop. This year, the pressure cooker is kind of blown a bit, and things kind of get explosive. I'm going to have joint custody. Then you go ahead and try. Michael struggles a lot this season with being a gay parent and having the system kind of set up against you. Melanie's also trying to uh, redefine the new family along with the other members. It's a very complicated family. There's just, there's no manual for it. Ben has been referred to, I think on screen and off, as Zen Ben. Hey! <laughs> We really get to see that turned on its head this season. Do you mind if I finish? As a matter of fact, we do. He becomes as un -Zen ben like as you could imagine. Brian is, I guess, trying to reconcile the fact that his closest friends are moving more towards family structure in their own lives. And what would be practical, Theodore? To get married? Become an imitation heterosexual? Justin has a totally different way of perceiving life. Justin, as he gets older, sort of realizes what it is that, that he wants and is able to articulate it. I was hoping we were finally going to be a real couple. While old friends adjust to change, surprising new faces emerge to mix things up. A lot of great looking gals here, didn't you think? Rosie fit right in. My knees are shaking, I'm a nervous wreck. I'm doing fine. Every gay woman has had the fantasy of kissing Sharon Glass. So when Sheila called me, I said, it would be with Sharon that I, she goes, yeah, yeah, no, you do all your scenes with Sharon. I am so in. She came on the set saying, I'm not an actress, I'm just a stand-up comic, okay? I'm not an actress. And I said, oh, stop. Right, well, by the time she finished the three weeks with us, she was saying, I'm a professional actress. Ladies and gentlemen, Miss Cindy Lauper! We got a free Cindy Lauper concert. <laughs> For me, it's great fun. The show itself is groundbreaking, and what it's done for the community is remarkable. It's the end of the novel, in a way. So this year uh, is the final chapter. We're not going out quietly. We have a lot of characters, and we have a lot of material to sort of try and get out there. Fit more storylines in. It's really everything coming together. Uh, and that was not a double entendre at all. You know, I did not mean that sexually, as is so often the case on the show. I wouldn't trade in this experience for, for anything this five years. Honestly, I'm gonna get the clint. Oh, yeah. <laughs>